Hello, I'm calling this video, uh, how about spinner boxes, drop down boxes, user forms, index function, <coughs> and match function. Here's what we're going to do. We, uh, we'll do it together, fine. I have, I, this is our Sun Edison case. And I want to talk about some Sun Edison issues, probably not that many, uh, as we uh, work through this. Now, I'd like to make take all of this stuff we read from PDF files, which was a lot of work, so I made some videos on it. We have all this stuff from the uh, PDF files, and then our... Uh, um, bond or credit rating uh, uh, simulations, I'll call that. All right. <coughs> Excuse me. And then we'll uh, take this from the... We'll put this in some graphs. Now, you notice, I hope, that when I did this, there were some spaces here. Oh, there's a space there. Uh-oh, there's a space there. I don't want the balance sheet names, and then we get to this one down here, and there are a whole bunch of spaces. So how do we make a nice little drop-down box that avoids those spaces, and we can start looking at some of these things, and then we'll, you know, so the objective is really to show you how to make a graph out of just about anything. It's going to be a lot of index functions. And so if we look at net sales, here's why. The more I look at this, the more... Look, the sales were going down. And then if we look at the... How about let's look at the total assets. They were skyrocketing. And the total debt. That was skyrocketing. Why? The, quest, the bigger question about Sun Edison is why they didn't go bankrupt earlier. And then we can look, oh, their equity went down, they had some big capex, here's their construction of their solar systems. You, I'm just clicking on the, the, the uh, drop down, uh, the spinner button to get this. So we can go one by one, so I'll show you how to make a spinner button, which is very easy. And <coughs> here's the non-operating expenses, some other stuff. And then we go to the income tax expense, which is many positive. There's this net loss. Why would you loan a company, make a loan to a company like this? Does the net loss not mean anything? Here's the net loss to the shareholders, the diluted assets, and we can look at what's happened to their cash. They used to have a lot of cash. It kind of went down. They still had to keep a lot of it, and then they had some short-term investments that went away. Accounts receivable were going up as they were growing but not making any money. They have some developments, prepaid, total kind of assets kind of going up with the the... investments in the new growth. Goodwill, they bought another company. We're starting to get a little bit of a story. I don't know if this derivative asset was confusing to me, but we should treat that in, in, in valuation really carefully. Their accounts payable were going up. Good. And then we had some accrued salaries and wages that they must have changed the name on. And some taxes, so total current liabilities were going way up. The whole company was going up, but the cash flow wasn't. And um, I'm just so excited to be able to do this, I guess. And then let's kind of maybe look all the way down to our where we started the EBITDA calculation. So there are our revenues again. This might have come from a dip, the top line revenues, and then our gross margin was going way down. Uh-oh. Well, that's okay, because it was too high before. But our admin was going up. 
So if we take away from that, then we have negative EBIT, depreciation was going up, so, and then we can add the deferred compensation and see what happened to our EBITDA, which was kind of pitiful. And that's our EBITDA margin, our tax rate, and then we can see what happens to the not net operating profits and look at our return on invested capital and then our debt and get kind of see how much is non-recourse debt. Okay, and that's it. So let's show you how to do that. Okay, now, before I do this, I'm afraid this point is going to be lost, and I'm going to probably do this again. And if, please, if somebody's looking at these videos to say, oh, maybe there's some good little thing in here, I hope you don't. Now, when we put together the profit and loss statement, here is our master list that, oops, excuse me, this is the profit and loss statement. This is the union function, the union function. Okay, I guess I have it in a small uh, font. And how do we put this in? Now, when I first did this union function, all of the names were kind of coming in the wrong places. And here's how you fix that. And that's an important fix for me, and it, it helped me a lot. When you take your PDF, your stuff from the read PDF, I think it's a really, really good idea to group these things together. And when you group these things together, the union function just kind of ignores the blanks. And it then manages, and I could have maybe even done this even better, it manages to keep the order of the, of the things correct. So let's look at the balance sheet. Here we have the union statement. Then we have the index and match statement, which goes to the, if I press F2 to see where it's going, it, it takes the whatever we have as our master list and then we just and then we com compare it to the to the new use the index and match to compare it to our new table okay and then if we you know so we don't want you know long term assets which mixed with the current assets and what you do is just when you read this in you kind of read them all in first and then try to m just move it around a little. Don't worry about this, but when you split it up, and the other really good thing about this is you can kind of immediately see the conflicts in the names when you put them in nice little groups like this. So this grouping, this grouping is kind of a big deal. All right, now, <sighs> let's say, okay, I'm gonna go back and finish this uh, video. Let's say, here's the, here are the steps. We copy the names. So let's say, um, let, I've said that ten times, excuse me if I'm irritating you. Let's say that I just want these. I just want a drop-down list, but I don't want any, and I want these uh, ratios, but I don't want any of these horrible little blanks. Okay, so to do that, I'm going to put this in perhaps a, a third page and just call this Shift F11 and call this our ratio page. Okay, and this, you first copy the names and then you remove the duplicates. You make a combo box with the names and get the, and, and, and get the, the code number. Okay, I don't know what to really call that. And then you use the match index for finding the row in the other sheet. And that's over here. So I made a little, I copied all the titles here. And then I used the remove duplicates to get rid of the spaces. And then the key thing here is I used a match function and matched this against everything in the other sheet, in this sheet. And when I did that, um, it gives me the row number. Hmm. And I made a combo box to get that. Okay, and then I use the index command to get the right... Uh, I said, okay, I, I really need the row number from this other sheet. That's what I really need. I don't care about this little index number. I need to know what row number, and here's why I need to know that row number. 
I need to know that row number because up, up here, if we put the index function in there, I can go and get all of the actual titles, and in this case it's on row 287, which must be interest expense, and then I can do the same thing and just get all the numbers that go across. So I can use the index function, and what I should be saying is the index function is the brother, the cousin, the key brother of these little drop-down boxes, okay, because they always go in order. That's what you're doing, and then you make a little graph. Okay, so I'm going to do that. Now, before I do that, here's what happened yesterday. I shouldn't say this, but I had this lady who said she worked for some fancy investment bank on Wall Street. She was so fancy. She said she could do any kind of modeling. She hadn't done project finance model, but all oh, this fancy modeling. So impressed. And then I asked her on Skype to scare, share the screen, and she didn't have the developer tab. And she said she was like the best Excel person ever in the world, but she didn't have the developer tab. How could you? That's our secret handshake. That's our secret. You look at that, and I thought, okay, I'll talk to her. Yes, I said, oh, you're so good. You're, oh, man, you must be so good in Excel. I could hardly believe it. And then I thought in the back of my mind, doesn't even have so to get the developer tab, you've got to go to options. And when you go to options, I've done this about a zillion times for you. Sorry about repeating it. You go to this one called Customize Ribbon, and you find developer tab. Oh, what's this draw thing? I probably should have that on. I don't even know that's a new one. Hmm. Ooh. See? I don't even know how to do that. Ink to math. Ink to reap. Oof. Sounds so fancy. Somebody's going to have to tell me how to do it, and then I'll steal your idea. Sorry about that. Yeah, that's what I'm really about, is stealing ideas and then, and then sharing them. I'm a, some kind of bad uh, person. Now, you copy these. So let's copy this. Step one, copy this, and I'm going to put it on the ratio page. And I'm going to copy to space, space, about <laughs> alt E S V. Excuse me. No, let's make it wider. So that was our first step here copy the names. Second step is to go to data. And again, for some reason I didn't know how to do this and somebody in my class said, oh, why don't you just use that remove duplicates? He was so smart. He had gone to Manchester a University. I, I don't remember his name. He's so smart. Uh, uh, the, the, uh, and where do I do this? Uh, oh, no, 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 no. Come on, come on. Just a minute. Oh, shit. How stupid. It says it right there. I was just on it. And then we'll just do it only for column C. And it said it rem re removed. And ha, it didn't remove the very first one, I guess. So what I probably should have done is, you know, put one right at the top and then said remove duplicates. So I put a space. So I, it got rid of that that one right at the top. That was a nice little helpful thing, wasn't it? Now the second thing we do is we find in this other sheet what the row number is. So I'll put the row and then I'll put in the other sheet. And I'll put from match with the match function. Okay, so we just put equal match and we go on to this one. Now it might get the revenues from the very top line, and I couldn't care less about that. Now it won't because they call them net sales. Make absolutely sure that you don't do what I did first. You don't have anything merged. That should be illegal to merge cells. Sorry. That's kind of one of the first. If somebody has some merged cells, the first thing I do is take them away. And these, that now I have the row number. And now I'm really ready to go. And then it says, we'll make a combo box. So once you have the developer, you go into the middle, 
and you paint yourself a little combo box. And some old people like me have trouble with that. And I'm going to even at the same time paint a, a, a spinner box. And we could even, you know, show you the rest of these. Hmm. Except I can't think of what to show. Yes, I, I'm going to show you those too. So I'm going to make another uh, checkbox. This just gets it if it's true and false. Okay, and um, this list box, hmm, this one I'm going to leave out. This is a one, this list box, this thing called the option button. Hmm, let me see if I can find a reason to do it. But these are the three main ones. And here's what you do. You go to format control and you go to a different page. This is Tatiana from Gazprom Bank. I don't think she works there anymore. I think she had some children. And then you you go to this one, and then you go to another page, and back to the same page, and we get our key code number. And that's why this stuff is so crucial with the... And I'll put it right here. I'm going to call that our code number. Make sure the sheet name is in here. All right? And then you, if you want, you can put this to 50 or something and then it'll it'll show all the all the uh, names on there if you just do it to eight it just shows the first eight and then you can do exactly the same for this one we know we went from line six so that's gonna be one down to line uh, hmm, 47 so they're about maybe 41 lines so you can you can say well let's uh, uh, go from zero, 1, that's, what, that's the smallest it can be, to 46. You might have gone one too far, and then you go to another sheet, back to the same sheet, and you click on this one. So you can, move, now we can move this either with the spinner box or with a drop-down box, and sometimes you like one, and sometimes you like the other. Now, there's one little thing we put in this total statements. If we go all the way down, there, do you see we put this little true or false to include deferred compensation? So what we can use is we can make a ratio and say include, now this is the biggest plane. Now, I did this and it worked, but sometimes putting the titles on this checkbox is just such a pain. And this time, we, we don't even have to go to two sheets, we just go to this one, and then we can control. That's why these things are called control. People like to control things. They're obsessed about controlling things. And then we can put this true and false. So it's true right now. If it's clicked, it gives us true. And then if we put it to off-click it, it goes to false. So that's our... Now, huh, okay. So the next thing we do is get our row number and other sheet that we're going to use. And we put... Uh, index, and we say, okay, let's index uh, uh, just a minute. I think I'm so sorry. Uh, yeah, what did I, I use? Index C. Yes. Oh, okay. equal index. That's a little bit tricky, I suppose. Yeah, it was not quite intuitive. Press, I'll press F4 this time. It doesn't really matter. And then press 22. So that means that if we go to FFO to debt down here, it's in row 291 of the other sheet. That's what we want. And if I go to, up to the top, it's in row 262 on the other sheet. So that's what we really want. We're working with the rows and the columns. Now let's make our graph. So let's put index 
And once we get the total row, we just click on the total row like this. And then we go back and say, well, that's in this, this row number here. I didn't even need an uh, F11 or anything here. I'm going to do what my friend Dennis tells me to do and put this kind of backwards. Now, let's then just get our uh, years. Okay, and this is, we worked so hard on getting all of these years, so I'm, I'm just going to leave them all here. I'm not doing fancy stuff where we, uh, uh, where we kind of, uh, uh, select which, uh, uh, if we want to kind of make different uh, variations on the X scale or a flexible X scale, okay? that we can do with the NA function. And then you just press F4. So again, you're just clicking on the entire column, this time for 2003, and then press the F4. And then we press Control R, and then we got our number. And if we want to, let's say, let's look at what our EBITDA is. And then let's look at our EBITDA margin. And then let's look at our return on invested capital. And then let's look at FFO to debt with recourse and FFO to debt with non-recourse. And then we'll just select this one and press alternate and F1 instead of F11. Okay, I suppose you could have pressed F11 as well. And then we get our number. And I guess, you know, you could have done anything. You could have chose not to include some of these, you just exclude some of these and the, the whole thing will work. So, I don't know, which one should we exclude? Maybe, you know, I don't know, I kind of like that, but maybe all, all this stuff here, we didn't like all of this. Because it was too much of a detail, you know, we don't really want any of this. And then, what we would have to do is just redo this how about, you know, I'll do that same thing we did before. And then we take all of this, and we use our beautiful little thing that that Manchester man told me, and he said, remove the duplicates. And then I'm not, I'm going to continue with the selected section, and then I'm going to go, okay. And it said I found 11, and it started at the top. Now, huh, I guess it... Didn't, I guess I left one in, but uh, and then I can do the same thing. So I didn't need all those lines this time, and then I can do this same thing. Now, if I click include deferred compensation, I can kind of see what's what's going on in the graph. Maybe I'll, if I let's let's make our yeah. Well, I could leave that one in if we include deferred compensation or don't. Not a big difference, but, hmm. And if we did the debt to EBITDA with the total debt, well, that was too extreme. Still pretty extreme, but if we include, don't include it, it went to 180. If we do include it, it went to 40. So in that case, it was kind of a big deal there. All right, and I'm saving this file this Sun Edison case study will be, huh, I'm going to put it in a couple of places on the disk. Oh, I'm in Dubai here. <laughs> uh oh, Oakland connection. Oh no. Oh, shoot. Okay. I'm going to put it again in this folder called Financial Ratio Analysis. And then I'm going to also put it over here because I some people are saying well I need a review of the shortcut keys so I gave you a little of that and then I'm gonna put this file and this video here for creating the uh, spinner boxes and forms and all that so I'll put it in kind of two places on the disk okay and that's it bye